Today I'm hanging out in Minnesota. Uh, I'm usually here when it's like negative 15 degrees, but right now it is absolutely perfect. 75 degrees and sunny. And uh, I'm here because my sister's having a new baby. So I decided to shoot up here from New York, meet my new baby niece. And in the meantime, I've been playing with Framer Motion and adding a little bit of animation to uh, the Reminders app from the Mirage tutorial. So today I'm gonna show you a little bit about this library and we're gonna add a little bit of animation here. So let's dive right in. So I've already got Framer Motion installed, and the first thing we're gonna do is just animate this little sidebar right here, which kind of expands and shows us other lists in the Reminders app. So let's find uh, the sidebar in the UI here. And to start, we're just going to wrap this in an Animate Presence component uh, from Framer Motion. So we can go ahead and import this directly from Framer Motion, and we'll see it right there. And what this is going to let us do is animate in and out uh, this whole tree. So the next step here is to update this div to be a motion.div, and this is also something we're going to want to import from Framer Motion. And then we can start using these cool properties. So the first one is animate, which is going to kind of let us set the end state of our animation. In this case, uh, our width is 192, and our initial is a width of zero. So if we save all that, uh, we'll see right here when we load the app, this kind of springs open. Now if I try to close this, uh, you'll see this doesn't work anymore, and that's because we didn't define an exit attribute. So if we can say on exit, the width should also be zero, well now, uh, we can toggle our sidebar open just like that. So that's pretty incredible uh, just how easy that is. Now you'll notice that every time this renders, it goes from that initial to animate. So if I go to about and then back to reminders here, it animates, which might seem a little weird. Or if we first render the app with the sidebar open, so if I refresh this, it animates. So to fix that, we can actually just come to animate presence here and uh, it has an initial attribute which we can set to false and now on the initial render the sidebar is either open or closed uh, but there's no animation but now when we close it or open it we get this nice default spring behavior and what's cool about this is because this state already happens to be tied to my url state i can actually use the back and forward buttons or just you know swipe on my trackpad here and the animation works and this feels really nice you know i'm going to put up all the code and host this demo so you can see it but when we talk about declarative programming in ui development this is what we're talking about because the state of the sidebar is tied to a piece of react state and it's synced with the url we were able to just update the ui in one spot and no matter how that open property changed whether it's from us clicking this button or clicking the back button uh, the animation is going to do what it's supposed to do. So this is really showing you the power of this declarative kind of component-based uh, programming model, and this is where the benefits really start to shine. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is actually animate this list of reminders right at the beginning. So let's find reminders.map, and uh, we'll do the same thing, actually. We'll just wrap this in an animate presence component. and then uh, rinse and repeat. We can basically turn each one of these list items into a motion.li. And now we should be able to just say animate, and then let's just say opacity is one, and initial, let's say opacity is zero. And look at that, uh, we, we get animation of all of our items. Now it'd be cool if they staggered in instead of just all fading in at once. And we can do that using the custom prop. So custom lets us use dynamic data to change the animation for each item uh, within a motion element. And so right here, since we're mapping over this list, we can pass in the index as custom, and then we'll get to use that to customize our animate and initial states. But to do this, we first have to change these over to use something called variance. 
So variance is another way for us to define animation states in frame or motion. So we're just going to give each of these states a name. And the first will be hidden, and that will be opacity 0. And then visible will be opacity 1. And now for our initial state, we can just specify the hidden variant. And for the animated state, we can specify the visible variant. And if we save that, we should basically see exactly the same behavior here. All the items just fade in. But the cool thing about this is we can actually make these functions. So instead of visible just being an object, it can be a function that takes in our custom data right here and returns an object. So again, I'll save that. We still see the same behavior because we're not using that index. But now if I say transition delay, i times 0.05, check it out. We have this sort of staggering effect right here. So that's really neat. And we can add some more behavior. Let's say we wanted this to kind of fade down a little bit. So we'll start with the y property at negative 50 and end up right where they're supposed to be at zero. And look at that. We have this really neat kind of fanning down effect. And we can see, you know, our other animation still works. And uh, this is pretty cool. Now, if there's only one reminder, I think it, it doesn't really look that great that it's, it's coming down. So what if we made our starting position also a function that depends on our index? And we can just multiply this by i so that the first one doesn't move at all. But as there are more of them, they move further. And so now we have this really cool kind of fanning out effect, and I think it makes it look a lot more natural. And if I were to pop over here to our kind of dummy data and make a few more reminders, you know, that looks pretty neat. Might be a little bit slow, so how about we come back, change this delay to maybe 0.025, and I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, let's put these reminders back. Now we've got our initial five, and we have our initial and animated state taken care of. Just like before, we also need to animate on removal because when I click these things, nothing's happening, and that's because we haven't defined an exit state yet. So let's define a new exit variant called removed, come back up to variants, type in removed, and we'll just make this opacity zero. So these will just fade out. And now when we click these, they fade out. So pretty neat stuff. Now let's check one more thing. Uh, if we come to our list and we add a new reminder, we'll see it drops down because it's being appended to the list, new item. And so it's gonna get all of this animation applied to it. And this is not really what we want here. Once the user's using the app, you know, it doesn't really feel natural that these new items are popping down, right? So how might we fix this? Well. We really only want to apply the animations the first time a list is rendered. And then once it's been rendered, uh, we don't have to worry about it anymore. So we can actually use a ref uh, to track that. So let's come up here to right before we start returning our JSX. And we're going to use ref. And we're going to call this has rendered reminders ref. And we're going to start this off as false. And we'll go ahead and import use ref. And then we'll use an effect to tell us that we have rendered the reminder. So we'll go ahead and set current equal to true here. And we'll just run this once, just like this. And so we can just come back right down to where our list is. And instead of starting out our initial state as hidden, we can just make this an expression. And we'll just check if we've already rendered the uh, reminders. So if we have, we want them to already be visible. Otherwise, we can go ahead and start them off as hidden. Now this is almost right, but we see we've lost our initial render even if we give our app kind of a full page refresh. And that's because this component actually re-renders a few times before this list is rendered. So we'll see here, we render the list once we actually have reminders uh, in this variable. So let's just use that in our effect. And we'll say if we have reminders, then we'll go ahead and say 
that our list has been rendered. And now we need to make sure to add that to our dependency array. Okay, so it looks like we've gotten our animation back on initial render or when we navigate, which is good. And if I add a new reminder, then we don't see that distracting animation anymore. So that's pretty cool. And we see here as we change lists, we don't see the animation. So, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want here. This is kind of the beauty of this library in React is that we have kind of total control here. So if we don't have reminders, that means we're fetching them again. We can just reset this back to false. And now this ref value will basically track whether or not the list is rendered for any of these lists over here. So now we have that initial render back whether we're switching lists, switching routes, or refreshing the app. But if we go ahead and add a new reminder here, uh, we don't see that distracting animation. So this is pretty neat. And we still have the fade out when we delete these, and we still have the sidebar tracked with the URL and doing that really cool default spring animation. So uh, that's it for this one. I had a lot of fun uh, using this library just for a little bit on this little app. Uh, so I wanted to make sure and share that with you. The API is really um, simple and clean. You can see we didn't have to change any of our application code at all to add animation, which really impressed me. You know, we're using Flexbox to style things. It didn't matter. It handled everything. Uh, so take a look at the docs. They've done a really good job with the doc site. And obviously you can tell they've put a lot of effort and energy into this project. So I definitely recommend checking it out. And I'll be sure to upload the code for this demo so you can check out everything that we wrote. And, uh, you know, let me know if you've written anything cool with Framer Motion, share any demos in the comments. It'd be awesome to see. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.